Good evening, family, or at least for me, it's evening. Outside today, doing a little grilling for dinner. Fair put a video together on this one. Um, this is the last nub that I have left from my uh, nub sampler pack from Thompson Cigar. This one is the Oliva Hellion Devil's Dew. The Devil's Dew. Kind of cool looking band. Doesn't have as much of a, uh, like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Barnyard. It doesn't have as much of a barnyard smell as some of the other ones did. Now I did smoke, there's three of these. There was the Devil's Dew, the Devil's Own, and I believe just a regular Oliva Hellion. Um, both the regular Hellion and the Devil's Own had some floral notes in them. Hopefully this has the same, because that, uh, that was very enjoyable. Kind of hard to smell the wrapper when you got this giant, you got the regular band and you got, I guess what you'd consider a foot band on there. I don't know, I'm really getting a sweet tobacco. Rolled pretty firm. Actually, I would call that very firm. Kind of spongy towards the cap. So, anywho. But I'm going to get this chopped up and uh, show you what we got going on tonight. Alright, so I did a V-cut on this one. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's kind of deep. Sorry, I got a plane flying over, guys. For being rolled so tight, I'm surprised on how loose this draw is. The draw is pretty loose. We'll see what that entails, but. Got like a little touch of pepper right on the tip of my tongue there. That's about it. I'm not getting much on the cold draw, guys. So. Anyway, so before we light this up, I'm gonna, let's see what we got cooking on the grill. Before you see, I already know what you're gonna say. I've never seen chicken that color before. Yeah, it's my purple chicken. You're probably wondering why it's purple. I like to marinate it in uh, Shiraz wine, which actually gives it that purple color, but it also gives the chicken a wonderful fruity flavor. Pretty good. I do recommend trying it. So, took the band off. For all the lighting purposes, that's kind of a big band. I don't want to be tasting paper. So, uh, we get this lit up, and I will be back. got this one little chunk here on the foot. See that black spot? Doesn't seem to want to light very well. I don't know if we got a little more Lajero in there or what. There we go. Lots of smoke output on this one, guys. I'll apologize right now if the camera's a little, you know, crazy. Uh, I'm just freehanding it today. It's whatever, family. I haven't put a video on in a long time, so yeah. Life's been busy. Definitely got some pepper in it. Right now I'd consider it like a, I don't know, it might be like a slightly oily pepper. It's kind of coating the top of my mouth, my tongue. 
Wouldn't really call it cayenne pepper though. I think it's like a black pepper. The retro hail, you do get that kind of like that floral note I was talking about. So that's nice. Um, it's not really an oily wrapper. It's kind of a dry wrapper. Lots of veins. See the seams. We got a thin mascara line so far. So that's good. Not too bad. It's burning pretty even now. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Smoke's almost a little too harsh for a retro hail. But, uh, Taiwo family, let me, uh, let me smoke on this a little bit, and I'll be back. Stay tuned. Alright, family, so we're not too far in. We're actually not even, I don't know, I wouldn't even call that halfway into the first third but um so the peppers settled down just a little bit we got kind of this little this little coastline going on here with the burn might have to touch that up here soon um so the pep peppers settled down a little bit we got some uh kind of earthy uh that florally note still in there um Definitely some cedar. It's got like a nice cedar taste uh, for the core. And uh, so I was looking up some stuff on this one. It's got a Nicaraguan wrapper, binder, and filler. Um, it's a Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan Habano wrapper. Um, Nicaraguan binder and then uh, Nicaraguan long filler. So that makes this a Nicaraguan Puro all from the same country anyway so that being said I like it I'm a big fan of the uh, the Nicaraguan tobaccos but there's just something about it that's not quite tickling my fancy and I can't quite put a finger on it Sorry guys, I was just looking at the cap here. I don't know if you could see that or not. Probably not. The camera's not gonna focus. Anyway. So anyway, on this on the the cap here, there's like this line of what I'm assuming is the glue that they used to put the cap on to, to starting to come back out of the wrapper there a little bit. That's interesting. So, these Thompson cigar packages are kind of hit and miss, in my point of view. I did get a good deal on them, but they haven't been the greatest of cigars. The Nub Sumatra was good. I did like the Nub Sumatra. The other problem I have with Nubs in particular, in this case... So if you go online and you look for Oliva's Hellion line, or if you look for, what's the other one I had? Uh, the Wrath, the Wrath line. Uh, nothing online says anything about them selling it in a 460, a nub. Nothing. The smallest size you could find is like a Robusto, which is like a 5 by 54 or something like that. So that kind of throws me for a loop. I don't know if Thompson just decided, hey, um... Make us, you know, X amount of 460s of the same blend, or what they did, but uh, I have a feeling it might change the blend a little bit if you change the size of the cigar. At least, I mean, I'm sure it does change the blend based on the size of the cigar, actually. Yeah, that pepper just keeps getting a little less harsh each time I take a draw here. So that's good. I'm not a big uh, super pepper fan or anything. But, uh, yeah. 
So we got cedar, earthiness, a little bit of a floral note. I'm getting like a hint of leather. Just a hint. Still a little rough on the nasal passages. So far it's alright. Um, honestly, it's not exactly my cup of tea. So I don't know if I'll be smoking the whole thing. But, uh... Yeah. Anyway, while well, I got you guys here, uh, first I'm going to apologize for my informalness today. As you can see, I'm a little scruffy. Work's been keeping me busy. Actually got a promotion, making a little more money now. Woo, yeah. Good deal, but it's also keeping me a lot more busier than I was before. So, that's a good thing, I suppose, for the pocketbook, right? Um, so that's also why I haven't gotten a whole lot of videos on here lately. I apologize for that. But uh, I assure you, I have plenty of cigars in the humidor, and uh, I got a nice week-long vacation coming up, so we should be able to get some videos in. Other than that, it is what it is, family. Life gets busy. Can't really control that. It just is what it is. Uh, I want to give a big shout-out to all my subscribers. I think I've got, I don't know, like 20 of you guys now. I appreciate it. I really do. Thanks for the support. Big shout out to uh, Lee Mac 912 as well. He sent me over some stuff that he had picked up from Cigar Fest 2018. So uh, look forward for a video for that as well. We got, uh, I think we got like six cigars that he sent me from that. So uh, we're gonna dive into those and see what we got. Um, put that in another video. Uh, if you if you guys haven't uh, watched any of his stuff yet, he also does cigar reviews. Uh, you can check him out on YouTube. That's Lee Mac 912. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen here so you'll be able to type it in and see it. And then uh, you could also check out the Meet in the Middle show. I've gotten some stuff from them as well. Uh, Mark Hyacinth and then uh, Lee Mac as well. They do. Uh, they got the longest running uh, cigar review show on YouTube. So check them out at uh, Meet in the Middle. I'll put that on the bottom of the screen as well. And you could see both of their stuff also at irobusto.com. If you haven't checked out irobusto.com, I suggest it. Um, there's a lot more on there than just cigar reviews and stuff, so give it a shot, guys. Give it a shot. If you're into this whole hobby deal, um, it's a good site for you. You get lots of information and uh, entertainment, of course. So uh, I'm going to smoke on this a little bit more. i got to check on the chicken, and uh, I'll be back. Oh, yeah, family. That chicken's a cooking. It's a cooking. Now, like I said, the purple hue from that Shiraz wine <clears throat> doesn't necessarily give it the uh, the favorable uh, presentation. It does tend to darken the chicken a bit when you cook it, as you can see. And uh, I don't know, on this piece here, you can kind of see it gives it that purpleness. I kind of like it. It's kind of neat. Some people, maybe not so much, but you know, they're not the ones eating it. I am. Ha <laughs> ha. So, yeah. But, yeah, family, that's my Shiraz wine chicken. I assure you, it is phenomenal. If you ever get the chance, stop on by up here in Michigan. I'll cook you some. It's really good. And even just standing there at the grill, you can get the aroma of the, uh, the, the fruity, the fruitiness from that wine. It's great, guys. It's great. I'm telling you. Soak it in there for 24 hours. Good to go, man. The alcohol uh, makes the chicken very tender, keeps it nice and juicy. And then, like I said, that wine gives it kind of like that purpley color, which uh, to some people it's kind of off putting. Um, but, you know, I think it adds a nice touch to it. I really do. Kind of something different, you know? As for the cigar family, I was doing a little research because uh, I was curious. That's what I do when I get curious, I do some research. So uh, the Habano aspect, I did not know before, actually comes from, uh, so Habano is a word that's basically just used to describe something that's from Havana. Um, so in this case, it's a Cuban seed, most tobacco is, 
uh, Cuban seed from Havana that was used to grow the plant that the wrapper from this cigar came from. I did not know that. Now I know. You learn something new every day, family. So at first I said I didn't know about this cigar, but it's kind of growing on me. Um, I don't know, you see that ash, it's kind of choppy. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. It's what you get with a nub, guys. Um, from what I under, I mean, from what I've seen, the uh, the nubs aren't too. Uh, I can't say that. I was gonna say they're not uh, they're not super well constructed, but uh, the Sumatra was pretty well constructed. I did I did enjoy that cigar very well. Um, that mascara line's getting a little bit thicker now, um, so that just tells me that the tobacco has less age on it than some tobacco does. Um, if I'm understanding that correctly, if I'm not, somebody comment below and let me know. But I believe it's the thinner the mascara line, the uh, the older the age is on the tobacco, I believe. And, by the way, shout out to all my subscribers. I actually just took a look at my channel. I haven't even been able to get on there in the last, you know, month or so. I've got 30 subscribers. Thanks, guys. I really do appreciate it. Uh, now I just got to start putting stuff on here for you guys to be able to watch, right? <laughs> Anyway, so we still kind of got that floral hint. It's more of on the uh, on the exhale now is where you get the floral hint. Um, still got a nice, rich uh, cedar in there, a little bit of leather. Um, the earthiness is starting to take over, I think. That pepper is still in there. Um, it's kind of like in the back of your mouth now. It's not as oily. It's getting easier to do retro hails. Um, so another another thing about so like the spiciness of the pepper on this, um, I got a blast of pepper up front, right? So that was actually probably from the habano wrapper. So the habano leaf is actually tends to be more spicier than some of your other leaves. Um, I have found that with cigars with a lot of lajero in them, tend to have a lot of spice to them as well. But that's more of like a black peppery, not as oily kind of pepper. Um, this was just a blast of oily pepper up front, kind of coated your whole mouth. Um, and now it's kind of creeping towards the back of my tongue and into the back of my throat kind of a deal. Um, it's not super overbearing, um, so don't shy away from it if that's what you're thinking. But uh, I would suggest, though, that uh, instead of getting it in a 460, I would go for the Robusto size. I think uh, I, do, I do think that would change the blend quite a bit. Um, the only thing I'm starting to have against the 460s, and Brother Lemak, he might go along with me here, is that... Uh, the 460 nub is designed to start you off at the quote-unquote sweet point of a cigar where all the flavor hits, you know, right in the middle. Um, I don't think that's exactly accurate just because, and I know they've talked about this on the Meet in the Middle show before as well, when you have, say, like a Robusto, you know, you got an extra inch on there. Well, that's an extra inch of burn time, which means all that smoke from that extra inch is getting filtered through the rest of the cigar, essentially, which is adding flavor to the rest of the tobacco in the cigar. So their statement about the 460 starting off at the sweet point, I don't think that's necessarily true because all that smoke from that first inch on a five inch cigar is basically flavoring the rest of the cigar for you, which in turn I would think, I mean, I'm not a scientist, but I would think that that's gonna add more flavor into the rest of the cigar. Hence the reason you get to the sweet point at four inches is because it's already flavored by the first inch or so. A lot of mumbo jumbo. I don't know. I'm just smoking, guys. I'm just smoking. So, oop. Well, it's a good thing I'm not sitting down. I just tipped a little bit of the ash off there. Whew. So, I don't know. The cigar's starting to grow on me, guys. For the longest time, I can never distinguish like a leathery flavor but I'm starting to get it, I'm starting to get it. Before I thought that was just like an earthy note kind of thing, but I'm starting to be able to understand the difference between the earthiness and like a leathery note. Um, the leathery notes kind of got like a, well, it's got like a leatheriness to it. Uh, and <laughs> you're probably wondering the same thing I've always wondered. What the hell does that mean? Um, it's got like a, I don't even know guys. It's, it's like a, like a fabric-y kind of like a, like if you took a leather glove and stick it in your mouth, 
I know, it sounds weird. It really does sound weird, but that's kind of how it seems. So on the retro, I'm kind of getting like that earthiness up front, and then the leather kind of slides in behind that. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, we're almost halfway, guys. Chicken's almost done. I got some taters and some uh, carrots I gotta go check on in the kitchen. And uh, I'll be back. Hold tight, folks. Well, hello. <laughs> All right, family. Chicken's almost done. So I'm going to have to go in and plate it up here in a little bit. But, uh, so something kind of interesting I just noticed. Um, between the cedar, I believe, and the, uh, like the floral notes in here, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, after you let it rest a minute, which is something else I'm learning, if you let a cigar rest instead of uh, just holding it or, uh, you know, puffing on it often, is that when you let it rest... Um, some of that smoke that's still kind of coming through the cigar as it rests is uh, kind of settling in to the rest of the tobacco, if you will. And um, I'm thinking, uh, I just had it rested on the side of the grill over there when I went in to check the potatoes and stuff. And uh, when I came back, uh, the first couple of draws, it almost had like a, almost like a fermenty, like a bourbon kind of flavor. Um, so I think that might be the mixture of the cedar and like the florally notes. All right, family. Sorry about that. Mother-in-law came out to have a cigarette. She's talking on the phone. I don't want to, you know, go over a conversation, whatever. She's talking to work. So uh, anyway, come down to the last bit here. Uh, I got to get this chicken in and get it plated up. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the numbers uh, for construction. I'm going to give it a three. Um, overall, decent construction. Had a little bit of a coastline going on. Had to touch it up a couple times. No big deal, whatever. Um, pretty average. Uh, flavor, I'm going to go ahead and give it a four for flavor just because um, there was a good variety of flavors in there, uh, being the floral notes, the, uh, the cedar, the leather, um, the earthiness. I think I caught some little flighting hints of like a coffee or a chocolate in there as well. Um, the complexity, I'm going to give it a four, um, just because uh, between the pepper and the leathery and the floral, they kind of come in and out throughout the cigar. Uh, so I'll give it a four on complexity. Price, I'm going to give it a three. Um, I don't exactly remember what I paid for the nub bundle, but uh, being that I got, I believe it was eight cigars with it, and I don't know, it was probably like $30 bundle, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, pretty good online deal anyway. So price, we'll give it a three. Um, so overall, that brings us to a 3.5 out of 5. A 3.5 out of 5. Fairly average. Um, it's got some nice flavors in it, though. That, uh, that floral note that's in these uh, seems to tickle my fancy a little bit. Still got great smoke output. But uh, like I said, guys, I got to get in and get this chicken on the plate. So uh, thanks for joining me today. Sorry for my uh, completely, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. Hopefully I'll get some new ones on here soon for you. And, uh, oh, before I go, of course, every day when you wake up, before you get out of bed, tell yourself today's going to be another great day. Why? Because your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between the truth and a lie. All it knows is that it heard you say that today's going to be another great day. And by golly, it's going to be another great day. Trust me, guys. You don't believe me? It's called the Law of Attraction. Look it up. Go on Netflix. They have a whole series on it. Well, not a series. It's a documentary. It's like an hour and a half long. It's called The Secret. It was a big craze all back in, I don't know, it was like four years ago. If you haven't checked it out, check it out anyway. Interesting stuff, guys. All right. It's a nice day out, family, but I think it's going to rain tonight. I can feel it in the air. I'm going to go in and eat me some chicken. Take care, guys.